Vamos a empezar. Por favor. So are we wearing these? Por favor. Aracha León Gustavo. Welcome, everyone, to this press conference. This is the premiere. It's in the section of the film Salatagi Perlas. The film's called Savages, the latest film by the North American director, Mr. Oliver Stone, who will present the film in the Victoria Eugenia in the company of two of the leading actors, John Travolta, the actors John Travolta and Mr. Benicio del Toro. Uh, subsequently, as you know, the Cursal will have the ceremony for handing over the Donostia Award and the special 60th anniversary uh, edition. For the first of these, will be given to Travolta and the second to, Dr. to the director Oliver Stone and precisely Benicio del Toro, who will hand over both awards to both of them. Before we commence any questions, I would like to warn you, but please, during... It, it, do not take any photos with a flash, okay, during the press conference. So therefore, let's try, let's try to make sure that the press conference goes through very well, as it should. Uh, um, uh, people are asking for a question. Mr. Stone, are you hearing me? Yes. Can you hear me? Lovely. A question. I want to know the opinion of the fact that you're both, you're receiving the Donostia Award Mr. Travolta, as well as Oliver Stone. And finally, for Oliver Stone uh, directly, I would like to ask you, what opinion do you have about the legalization of marijuana within the context of your film? Uh, quote, unquote. Thank you very much. Two questions. Uh, you, about the award or about marijuana? <laughs> Which I think it was both. Both. One and the other. Thank you. Yeah. The award uh, gives me uh, s special pleasure because it's my... Uh, I came here in 1987, uh, if at the uh, aerodrome was the first showing of the film of Salvador, and it was a special night with 3,000 people screaming. It was very special. I love San Sebastian. I love the food, the beautiful women. I love the attitude, the sea. I might, I might come here and retire. Who knows? Uh, <laughs> As to marijuana, I don't know if you grow enough here. There's better weed in California, probably. But certainly marijuana is healthy, and it's a very good uh, gift from the gods to, the, to people. And it makes us healthier, it helps your pain, helps your cancer, it helps you uh, your stress, and can be a very great boon to humanity. There's no need to make it into a weapon of war. I'm from Argentina, Roxana Vasquez. I would like to ask John Travolta and Benicio, what was it like to shoot a film with Oliver Stone, and how, and these, and how was it to be such villains, to be such bad guys in this in these films, the characters you portrayed? Um. Oliver Stone is one of those directors. He's one of those directors who makes other directors dare to do things because. He's a maverick, so therefore to work with him for me was was an achievement to be able to work and collaborate with a master. Y para mí, llegar a un plató donde Benicio del Toro y Oliver Stone te están esperando para hacer una escena maravillosa. Por esa razón estás en esta industria del cine. Para eso vives, para crear. A diario, a diario. So to me it was, uh, you know, you arrive, in your own mind you arrive. <laughs> and, I, and I did. Now you should eat a sandwich. Yeah. <laughs> Next question, please. I would like to ask a question to the three. Oliver Stone, uh, why do you use comedy in a drama which is so grandiose, uh, such as in this film? Secondly, the famous issue of the mafia of the 
the, the families in 2012, all of a sudden it's it's like not the godfather, but the new, shall we say, the new families of the mafia, the cartels. And I see that the criticism that you always make to power, uh, you've shown at the end with the character of John Travolta when he's presenting everyone he's caught and everyone he caught at the end of the day and arrested. To Vinicio del Toro, I would like to ask you, I read in, well, in a news printout that that drugs, we should bear in mind for fighting against drugs, we have to bear in mind Mexico. Wouldn't it be better to legalize globally uh, drugs? And wouldn't it be better to have, would there, I don't know whether it be more or less drug addicts, but I'm sure that the drug traffickers would be asking for pittance out in the street. I'm sure. John Travolta, after your success with Quentin Tarantino, I'd never seen John Travolta, John Travolta type Manero, like a Manero. You've gone back to your origins, I think. I haven't seen you since, since then as a Tony Manero. You know, I would use anything to make a movie work. I'd use satire, I would use comedy, I'd use melodrama, opera, tragedy, music, whatever it takes. You know, it's hard enough to make a good movie. So, the pie can contain many different elements. Uh, I'm not so sure he knew it was a comedy until I arrived. <laughs> then, uh, well, no, Benicio's funny, also. Uh, <laughs> Funny in a weird way. He's I wasn't way. sure I was funny until John Travolta arrived. <laughs> <laughs> and as to uh, the subject matter, yeah, the Godfather of his old hat. This is the new gangs. This is the new war. This is brutal. This represents a new level of violence that is beyond the beyond the what I thought was normal. I mean, the war in Iraq uh, that Mr. Bush prosecuted led to reverberations around the world. I think much of the Mexican technique of beheading and torture came from Baghdad, came from Iraq. And uh, the brutality of the, uh, Brex of the Mexican war for the last ten years, uh, six years, has been enormously. 50,000 civilians have been killed, which is equivalent almost to the Vietnam dead in the U.S. dead in, in Vietnam, as well as the murder rate is just as high in uh, Ciudad Juarez as it was in Baghdad. Also, there was a moral code in the old uh, Italian mafia in the States, at least, that uh, you spared women and children. And in this new new mafia, uh, according to research, uh, everyone uh, is uh, at call if you betray uh, the powers that, that are at that uh, time. So um, it's a little different. That's from your research, as a matter of fact, that you gave me. I read that. Yeah. yeah. As to the uh, ending of the movie, you know, John, uh, it, it, frankly, it represents a, a certain cynicism on my part about the stupidity of this drug war, because I think the people who benefit are the people who should not benefit, which is to say not only corrupt uh, characters like John in the movie, the DEA agent, but the whole concept of fighting a war against this, uh, creating this corruption, that this cynicism that 42 years ago we started the war on drugs, they say the U.S. has spent a trillion, a trillion dollars prosecuting it. There's been numerous murders. There's more drugs, cheaper drugs, and better drugs than ever. And it will, the prison systems have been built up in every country. The U.S. uses the war on drugs to spy on other countries, not just to uh, root out drugs, but to go into those countries, whether it's a Colombia or a Mexico or an Afghanistan or a Pakistan, to put their people into place in order to know how, in order to militarize the governments. And what happens next, of course, is it becomes the war on terror. So the narco-terrorist state is a natural evolution of the war on drugs. But that's over with. We can't stop it. We cannot do anything about it. It's here now, 2012, and the movie, the end of this movie, represents the cynicism of this place, where a, John, a DEA agent can uh, take over and be the biggest, the biggest winner in the movie. With regards to the other question, I don't, I don't, all I can say that you must bear in mind Mexico, Mex both countries have to be borne in mind and they're represented in this country, the US and Mexico, and, and I believe that you're right, it should be the whole world, why not? Mm. Uh, 
you didn't answer, Mr. Travolta. Uh, Mr. Stone, could you tell Mr. Travolta he answered the question? <laughs> Pay attention. Yeah. Um, the question that you were asked, if you recall the question, that you went back to the Tony Madeiro, uh, you're going back to your origins, this is the first time he's seen you since Pulp Fiction, you, the, you're like Tony Madeiro again, are you going back to your origins? Mm. Oh, because this character has nothing to do with Tony Madeiro or the character in Pulp Fiction, they're miles apart. Uh, the, uh, the character, the DEA agent in Savages is... Uh, a corrupt, duplicitous uh, kind of man who is a chameleon. Uh, he he has to change his personality uh, with every group he's with in order to survive the day. And he has nothing to do with Tony Minero on Saturday Night Fever. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> and, uh, nor does uh, he have uh, Vincent Vega as a heroin addict uh, hitman. Although, uh, again, nothing to do with uh, this character. Maybe they're talking about your primal edge. Oh, the edge. Well, that's different. An edge, yes. Well, an edge, of course, yes. But I, you know, I'm, I'm an actor. I think more in those details. Edge is general, you see. But that's uh, that's what you gathered from it. I understand. Does it answer the question, though? I'm not sure. I don't know, Steve, what? The what does it mean for you to? What it must mean for you to receive the 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 Donostia award to win the award? <laughs> yes. Now, well, this is my viewpoint on the award. There's so much nullification and invalidation, and uh, well, let's say making less of other people in the world. That if someone or a group of people decides to get together and give you an award and pat you on the back for good work, you celebrate it, and you are so thankful that someone is doing this. Uh, that it's a wonderful uh, thing, and I appreciate it completely, and I'll take it any day you want to give me. Uh, there you go. <laughs> next, next question. Hi, good afternoon. You've talked about the Iraq war, you've talked about the responsibility of President Bush. I think this morning here in Spain you've also talked about the responsibilities of the government that was here at that time and the consequences that it should have had for President Aznar. Uh, could you explain that to us as well? And this is for uh, Mr. Oliver Stone, you know, the participation. Now, the, 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 the participation of President Aznar, he also has responsibilities because you've talked about Iraq, you've talked about uh, President Bush. What about the responsibility of President Aznar who participated with him in the, in the war? Uh, the uh, allies of Mr. Bush. Uh, there are very few in the world. Among them was uh, Mr. Blair in Britain, and certainly a big ally was Mr. Aznar of Spain. Uh, there were other allies. Uh, the Coalition of the Willing, I think they were called. Uh, I think it was to Spain's disgrace that they sent troops there to help Bush. I think. Uh, the Bush regime it will go down in history as one of the worst presidencies that the, Ameri the American people have ever suffered through. I hope uh, in Spain one day you come to terms with Mr. Aznar. And, uh, you know, there are things like an international court of uh, uh, criminality at The Hague. They're available to you. It's up to you. Next question, please. Two questions, one for Mr. Travolta. What did it mean to you to work with Quentin Tarantino in Pulp Fiction? And the second question, for Mr. Stone and Mr. Travolta at the same time, what memories do you have of working with Brian De Palma in Blowout, in your case, and, and Mr. Stone as a scriptwriter in Scarface? Thank you. I completely loved working with uh, Quentin because he was uh, such a, a, a deep fan of mine that uh, to work with him and him writing a role so specific and so delicious as uh, this role I had in uh, Pulp Fiction was a fantastic opportunity and it, re it gave me a rebirth in my career and uh, so that was completely fantastic and my memories of Brian De Palma, uh, Brian discovered me. He put me in my first movie, Carrie, and uh, he followed it up with Blowout, which I appreciated because he took me very seriously, which I wanted to be taken. Uh, and uh, I had an amazing uh, time, both times, with him. It's, uh, 
Miss Song. I think he wants to know your memories of uh, Quentin. I mean, I mean of uh, Brian. 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 Writing oh, 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 yeah. yeah. No, uh, Brian uh, was a. Uh, uh, one of uh, uh, a very generous director. Uh, he allowed me to participate in the whole process as a writer, screenwriter, and I learned a lot about hand, how to handle a very big production that got bigger and bigger and bigger. <laughs> but uh, it was it was a great learning experience, and I'm always grateful to him. Uh, hi, this is Alexander from National. Um, Don, uh, it's, it's working okay. Uh, you did something that uh, Mr. Stone that is mathematically out of control. Uh, you made us believe that uh, really uh, three people can be equally in love, but can this thing uh, take place in real life? And, <laughs> and except from that, I would like the definition from all of you uh, for the word salvajes, savages. Well, who says it's mathematically out of control? I mean, that's your perception. I was in Paris uh, four days ago with a French journalist who told me that a very attractive woman in her 40s who said, what's, so big, what's such a big deal about a, a woman with two men? I've been living with two men for the last 20 years. <laughs> so you see the French have a different attitude about it than maybe the Greeks do. But you Greeks, of course, you, uh, I remember Alexander. Uh, your answers? Was that for me too? <laughs> oh. oh, well, you know, love is love. And... Uh, and I think anything is possible with the human nature. So I'm not going to deny the possibility of two people being in love with one person or vice versa or anything. I think anything is possible. So uh, it's, it's a, the, your imagination. And of course, these are very young people. And, you know, uh, maybe they'll grow out of it or maybe not. Uh, but I think it makes a great book and it makes a great movie to have this as a, a premise. I think it's very modern and very current and, and kind of fun to watch, you know. Buenas uh, tardes. And you, you didn't answer it. No, no, it was just for you too. No, yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, Benicio is jealous of her too. Yeah, That's no, why she rapes, he rapes her, you know. Yeah. <laughs> um, salvaje, pues salvaje. Savage, well, savage means savage. Salvaje, savages. What does it mean? What does savages mean? Well, it means breaking with with every type of morale. It means greed. And let's follow the snake. We can use many words. Good afternoon. Uh, no, go, go ahead. You had to answer the question on savage. What does the word mean for you? The fact that uh, Benicio in the movie calls uh, drives by the threesome and he calls them fucking savages. I think that's great, and sums it up. Uh, but the truth is, uh, Aaron, Aaron, uh, Aaron Johnson, our young uh, British actor who has the California accent, with a, he uh, is is one of the major transition figures. He starts the movie as very much a spiritual man, a man like Bono who works in Africa and Asia, wants to do good with marijuana, plants it, puts it out, puts good vibrations out, very 60s, like Blake and, of course, has to run the gamut, and it's tested all the way through. First of all, through his, it's his mistake, it's his responsibility that uh, Blake is, uh, is kidnapped because he's trying to negotiate with the cartel. As a result of the kidnap, he has to go get her. When he has to go get her, it's not so easy. He yeah, has to kill. get the money. He has to kill. He has to go to a heist, first of all, where he is not able to pull the trigger. He's not able to kill. And he almost gets killed and gets his partner killed, which is a very uh, dangerous situation. He has blood all over himself. You see a progression through the movie. And then he gets more and more coyones until he gets to this point where he is forced to kill somebody, which is a big thing. And he burns a man to death. It's a horrifying scene, and it's meant to be. And Blake sees it. It breaks her heart, too. They will never be the same. The three. Would, she says at the end of the movie, we'll, I don't believe that three people can... She says, not me, uh, they, I don't believe that three people can equally uh, be in love. Uh, that's what she says. But you saw in his transition the essence of the word savages. It's a very ironic and relative statement. Uh, Is that for me? Yes, yes, savage. Savage, uh, Mr. Travolta. Could we, could we, sorry, can you answer savage? Could we have done the, could you have made the film with the voice on off? 
Uh, savages, savages. The, what does the word mean to you? No, no, no. What does it mean to you, savages? No, it's a different question. And she's asking, could you have made savages without the voice on off? No, 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 no. <laughs> the the narrative, no, the narrative, yes, the voiceover, the narrative. I love the voiceover. My favorite part. <laughs> savages. Savages. <laughs> I don't think so. I think we had to, it was a long, it would have been a much longer movie because I think there's a way to shorten it and you condense it. And also it is her point of view. Uh, in the book there were six points of view, six or seven. And I think with her telling the story, it speeds it up, it compacts it. And it's told from a point of view of innocence and, and young and youth. And the transition, it's an interesting beginning because of course she says her first line is, just because I'm telling this story doesn't mean I'm alive at the end of it, which sets up the idea of an unreliable, uh, unreliable narrator. And I think uh, you can't trust it quite that she's, and it pays off in the end with the first ending when she says, this is the way I think it should have ended. I but love the, voice the truth has a mind of its own. I, uh, and, and then there's another then ending, which I think is more realistic. It's great. And she did a great job doing that, that voiceover. Yeah, she did a lot of that work. Uh, we, Good work. Many that. times we did it. There are, no, there are moments when she's uh, speaking and she's not being physically there to see what we're, as a, a narrator, uh, as an omnipresent narrator, obviously, she's not there all the time. She's talking about things she didn't participate in. She heard about it later. <laughs> but uh, by the way, uh, she in, when she was in the deepest done in the torture section before Benicia, Benicia, when Benicia ultimately uh, violates her, uh, she doesn't speak at all in that section, haha. Uh -huh. And then she finally, when she's liberated a little bit into Elena's house, we allowed a few words to get in. And I have a, can I ask you a question to all the girls? <laughs> Do you think it's a, a woman's fantasy to have uh, two men? <laughs> I see a lot of yeses. <laughs> si, señorita. Si. Next question. Hi. Darien Schickman for Argentina. It's Kega Kengala. It's a program. I want to congratulate you for the film and thank you very much to coming, for coming to this festival. My question for John Travolta. John, I'm a grand, great fan of yours. The truth is I've seen all of your films. Saturday Night Fever, I've seen it a tirelessly, a tireless amount of times and I've also seen Battlefield Earth, and at 20 minutes I fell asleep. I would like to ask you how the film finishes. And for Venetia, Venetio, I would like to say Venetio, and I've been following your career for a long time. The truth is, uh, uh, and now you've not fallen asleep yet? Good. Okay. You've seen, you've been, you didn't fall asleep. Keep going. The question for Benicio. Benicio, I followed. I followed all your career, which is excellent, and with your Latin spirit, you've you played the El Che and an excellent participation as a young man in the video. The the, the uh, Isla Bonita, Madonna. The Argentines want to know whether you've had a short romance with Madonna in the moment when you recorded that video. No. <laughs> Nothing. No, not even a few kisses, no. And Travolta, the answer, uh, Mr. Travolta. I have no answer. Okay. A question for Mr. Stone. A question for Mr. Stone. I think there are films that mark a before and an after in the history of cinema. I think you've directed one of them, which is JFK. And I would like you to tell us The visual concept and the editing of the film, whether it was something that you had, was very clear from the outset, or was it a process that developed as you, sh you shot the film and you edited the film at the same time? Was it from the outset, or was it gradual? Well, as with most films, it was a combination. It was both. Uh, the, the, con the script was extremely complicated. In fact, it was so complicated that at one point I cut out quite a bit of the cross-cutting 
so that the studio executives would not see it because I don't think they would have understood it. As a result, they financed the film, and then I put back the, uh, I did put back all the uh, cross-cutting. But it was hard to explain that on paper, the cross-cutting. The same is true about all these films, uh, including Savages. Uh, it was a very exciting idea, but sometimes you don't quite know how you're going to get there, and the process is this development, and you feel the style as you go. And in the editing, too. And with the actors and the collaboration with the actors. Benicio kept fucking me up with saying things like, you know, you know this kid, Esteban, let me kill him. I said, John, you don't kill him until act three. I kill him now. And he's right. And I, I, I started thinking about it. He was right. You know, he was smarter than me on that one. He said the same thing about, oh, let me rape her. <laughs> no. <laughs> Next question. For Benicio, for Benicio del Toro, apart from Savages in San Sebastian, you also participate with a collective of seven days in Havana. Um, how do you evaluate this experience behind the cameras as a, as a director? Or you have any projects or any more projects as a director to alternate with your acting career? No, I'm here. You ask this question next to Oliver Stone. Hello. Um, I would like to try it, uh, obviously, but we're going to have a press conference. We'll hold a bronze up for seven days in Havana, and we can talk about that then. But yes, I would like to continue, and it was an experience which was a very good experience. One final question. This is a question for the three of you. A question, a question for the three of you. You three people are related to cinema and violence at the same time. Have you ever addressed filming in Colombia? A modern, the modern, uh, shall we say, homeland for everything that's happening with drug trafficking. This is a question for the three. Have you ever thought about filming in Colombia? About the things about that have to do with the drug trafficking, which is the homeland. Have you got a book? Have you, have you got a script? Yeah, well, well, let's check it out. What do you think? The, if, if there's an opportunity and a good story behind it, well, why not? I would be interested in it. Is that the question? Whether I would work in Colombia? Yes. Whether uh, to, uh, Do you know the, the, it's cinema because it's cinema is... Yes, I know a little bit of, of Colombia and of filmmaking, but not too much. But yeah, I would. What about Oliver? Would you like to shoot in... The question was for the studio. To shoot a film in Colombia? Does that sound good? Uh, See. Yes, sí. Uh, and uh, you have a very good uh, tax uh, system there, a uh, benefit for films, I believe. And I've heard much about it. And we explored the uh, Escobar story. We explored it. Uh, and uh, there is, uh, you know, the, uh, your new president is, uh, is, uh, impresses me, your new president. Uh, well, your old president I found as difficult uh, to admire as uh, Calderon in Mexico. Sign me up. <laughs> okay, stay invitados. Okay, guys, you're all invited. Thank you. Thank you.